Hiya Tanglers! I'm Annie and I'd like to welcome you to my last Lunchtime Tangle series filmed here in Austria before I go home uh, from my wonderful stay. I'm saving the best to last, at least I think it's the best. This is my Quirrell. It's a new pattern that I'm calling Quirrell and you might think, oh, it's really not that hard, but there's a little bit of a trick to it. This is based on an actual exact Gustav Klimt swirl that I found so beautifully balanced in one of his panels that he painted for a dining room in the palace or in the you know villa of some rich industrialist in Brussels called the Stocklet uh, Frieze or the Stocklet Murals. And I included a picture of it I will, I will show you here. It's, I'm trying to stay true to that pattern and all of these other uh, patterns are found in that same panel. So that was my inspiration for this because 1979, I came here and studied for a year abroad in Vienna and Baden by Vienna as an undergraduate student of both German and art. And as an art student, of course, I fell in love with Gustav Klimt and have been crazy about him ever since. So I really, really could not think of leaving Austria without sharing something about Klimt with you. You can imagine how impressive it was for me as a student of art to see his original paintings hanging in the Belvedere. But this summer, I've had quite a bit of a, an immersion in Gustav Klimt because I not only went to the Secession and in Vienna saw many of his other uh, works, but I also was lucky enough to experience the Klimt immersive experience. Then the other thing that I did, which I had never done in the past, is I took a little side trip to Atase. And Atase is where Gustav Klimt spent many, many of his summers over the years and painted dozens of his masterpieces, basically. And when I was there, I saw this panel hanging in the museum that uh, was there on Atase. And I just fell in love with this really balanced swirl. So that's what I tried to try to stay true to. These are my two inspirations I was playing around with. And it is a kind of a fun tangle to uh, do some meta patterns with. You can mirror this and make almost like a heart out of it if you do two sides. But this and all of these patterns in here were in that actual panel that I saw and was inspired by. To best show you how to do this pattern that I'm calling Coral, as you can see here on my tangle tag, and I will place a photo of it on my Annie's Botangle Alumni Student Facebook page. This is a five tile from Zentangle. I am going to be using a PN Micron pen from Sakura. I have a soft graphite pencil and I have an eraser here as well as a little a ruler. You can use a ruler, you can hand freehand it, but I'm going to take my pen right off the bat and go ahead and ink that straight line down on both sides because that is going to be part of the pattern. And then I'm going to get my pencil out and show you how to make the wave off of which we will build our spirals. When I first was trying to step this out, this was my first sample that I made. If you can see, the spirals are located on a wave that's pretty steep, pretty close together. I went back and looked at the original Gustav Klimt panel and his spirals were much more spaced out, a beautiful balanced pattern and it was much more like this with a, a, a shallow wave, right? So this is what we're going to go for today. It gives gives the whole pattern more space and we put these triangles in, that's what he, he did. And we want to have enough space to have one, two, three, four rows of spiraling. That includes that center. So I'm going to start up here. I'm doing this in pencil and I actually huh, kind of did it okay. I'm not going to need to erase that, but uh, 
if you don't get the perfect equally placed wave, you can correct that before you ink it in. So now I'm going to get my PN and start inking in that wave, going all the way to the top and the bottom with the top of the hill on that guideline. So now we're going to be making our first spiral jumping off of a hill that's, at, that's showing off the top. Let's do it over here because this one's kind of halfway cut off and you actually start about here, which would be here because I don't have the whole wave. So I'm going to show you the top of this one. One, two, three, and the fourth line is that circle, and it's rather large because Gustav put other colors and dots and things in that circular area. So that's the first one. Now we're going to go the opposite direction with this hill that's con it's going downhill, right? So we want to find about this point to jump off of and spiral like this. So it's really hard to demonstrate and spiral. You'll be able to do it much better at home. But I want you to warm up by just spiraling, making spirals, but don't make it from the center like we're used to. Make it from the outside and try to make it as circular as you can. Two, three, and four. So just keep practicing that motion. Two, three, and four. And then this will be pretty easy. So here we have an a hill, let's see, where did we start? We started here, so nope, this way. This is how we started. This is again going down, so we're gonna start about three quarters of the way down to make that negative space, which is this part here, right? And this one would be coming off here and going around. And then this one again is, is the hill. So we would be coming off of this and going counterclockwise. basically it. That is Quirrell. But what Klimt does is he finds the top, which would be here, the top kind of off to the side, and he makes this pointed triangle here. Not in the center, but off to the side. And strangely enough, the point is pointing downwards. And I accidentally did it the opposite direction and it does not look as good. He knew what he was doing when he designed this. So he often makes these triangles as little leaves. Let's do that again, just so you can see it. Maybe I can do a better job on my swirls. Maybe we'll do three. We could go the opposite direction with our hills and see what kind of meta pattern we, are, we can make. So we would go something like this.
there it is mirrored and let's do one more just for fun and maybe we'll just make it uh, same as this one So it's really fun to play around as a meta pattern and um, fragment, I guess it would be, right? The most, the most beautiful thing is of course using gold because Gustav Klimt was, that was one of his trademarks, was gilding his paintings uh, with real gold leaf. I love using these colored backgrounds on this one. I used Lindy's Magical Shakers and their dyes so you can as you see, I have my guidelines here, but guess what? I can erase and I'm not picking any of my paint up because it's not watercolor, it's dye. So that's a really fun thing. And one of the reasons I am not shading this is because all of Gustav Klimt's paintings, if you study them closely, are quite flat. The only places he really uses shading is in the faces of his portraits and the bodies. He uses more texture, even so much that it's sometimes his gold swirls are three-dimensional, that he's used like sizing underneath them and then gilded the gold on top. So I am not shading this at all to keep in his style. Enjoy playing with Quirrell. Show me what you come up with. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to be signing off. Next time I join you, I'll be home in Colorado. Bye-bye for now. That's it for today's Tangle. Thanks for joining me. If you like these lunchtime tutorials, please give them a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I also invite you to check out my website for classes that I have scheduled or to purchase my tangle tags for your favorite step outs. That's bowtangle.net. I'm leaving you with some other links too. Zentangle.com, where you can learn more about the Zentangle method from its founders, Rick Roberts and Maria Thomas. You can also visit their store there for a multitude of Zentangle paper tiles, tools, books, and kits. Tanglepatterns.com is that site I talk about where you can explore hundreds of tangle patterns, read about them, and get the step out, which is basically the deconstruction of the pattern. And finally, if you'd like to share your beautiful results with me and my student community, please join Annie's Botangle Alumni Facebook page. We're a private group where we inspire each other with our work and offer tips and useful information about art and Zentangle.